Hello everyone, this is me Sajna Shrestha, Adrivan University Ambassador and working for poll number one, that is No Poverty. G7 is a fellowship program that is run by Road to Rise organization, which aims to shape the university undergraduates to a resilient leaders through environmental learning so that our earth and our society can be a better place. But today, I am interviewing our lecturer, Cecil Dahasan, who is also a civil and environment engineer, to share his views and opinion on environment and SDGs. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. So before I start, could you please introduce yourself? Yes, uh, sir. So hi, my name is Cecil Dahar, and I'm uh, a civil and environmental engineer at Professor. I'm currently working as a lecturer at the Department of Civil Engineering at Himalaya College of Engineering, Nepal. So, so I've been working in different projects related to civil and environmental engineering, mostly concentrated in uh, water and air quality. Uh, uh, prior to this, I was also working on uh, uh, disaster uh, relief projects. Uh, so, uh, so after the 2015 uh, earthquake in Nepal, I so I was involved in uh, reconstruction projects in, uh, in in few districts in Nepal. So, as you have mentioned before, that you have worked for mostly for air and related, air and water related uh, projects. So, what are the predictions for air and water pollution after 2030? Is it progressing or will it be degrading? Uh, well, it, it all depends upon uh, our efforts. Efforts from the government sector as well as some. Uh, uh, national and international organizations. So as of now, air pollution is quite critical. If you look at uh, the data available for, for air quality, uh, so, so it's uh, mostly they are concentrated towards carbon credit. If you look at all those uh, studies are done and, and all those uh, ground-based observatories, most of them are concentrated in carbon credit. However, uh, air quality, situation in uh, in the southern belt of Nepal is quite uh, I mean quite worse as it is near to the Indo-Ganges plain uh, uh, which is known as the which is one of the hotspot major hotspot of air pollution in Nepal. So uh, of course some increased efforts uh, are required to uh, give information on, uh, on air pollution in different uh, different air pollutants country air pollutants such as PM 2.5 and, uh, and trace gases such as ozone, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur, and sulfur dioxide and all. The progress uh, based on the ability of water uh, uh, that is free from E. coli. So our, our main goal should be uh, providing safely managed uh, drinking water services to, uh, to the people. So we need some, uh, some uh, non-conventional water sources such as traditional water spouts, storm water spouts or spring sources. The United Nations has specified 17 goals that are targeted to solve existing problems and issues that are in our society. What are your view, view on it? How can it? Is it possible? Is it okay? Or is there some changes that needs to be done? Well, I believe SDGs targets are quite relevant uh, to solve the problems existing in our societies in different fields uh, and if I were to speak uh, uh, based on my experience in water and sanitation projects, based on my work on those fields, uh, there has been improvement uh, in the uh, access of improved uh, drinking water sources uh, to, uh, to different uh, people in, in, in Nepal, uh, like the MDG, at the end of the MDG period only around 83 percentage of the population had improved uh, water sources, whereas uh, as of uh, 2019, uh, that has increased to 97 percentage. However, if you look at the access to clean drinking water at household level, uh, uh, it's quite challenging. Only uh, I think 85 percentage of uh, the total households in Nepal have risk of, of water contaminated with E. coli. And if you look at uh, the households of with uh, low lowest wealth quintile, it's even worse, it's around 95%. Uh, the recent uh, joint monitoring program report shows that only 18% of the uh, population in Nepal have uh, safely managed water which is free from fecal contamination, which is near
near death premises uh, and also near death premises. However, <coughs> uh, we need uh, an increased effort to uh, meet our 2030 targets uh, as uh, uh, the progress in attaining safely managed drinking water is decreasing in Nepal and Nepal is one of the 14 countries with decreasing uh, rate of, uh, uh, of the access to safely managed drinking water. So uh, I guess the targets that has been set uh, is very, uh, very relevant and uh, of course it might be challenging but uh, we need an increased effort to, uh, to meet this uh, targets. Yeah. You mentioned that you work in one uh, well, actually, uh, I always have great affinity towards environmental issues and climate change. So, uh, when I was in graduate school, I was uh, fascinated by this uh, technology called pore water harvesting technology. So, uh, there were a few projects uh, in eastern uh, eastern hills in Nepal which uh, aimed at capturing uh, fog water. Uh, so, so they started in the early 2000s, but they, but, uh, well, but uh, they did not continue. Those projects did not continue. So, I was, uh, I was curious to know about uh, the sustainability of those uh, of those uh, projects. So, I, I visited one of such uh, large fog collectors in Ilam district. So, I conducted some surveys and uh, and I, I I presented my findings at. Uh, at an international conference that was uh, held in, uh, in Kathmandu, Nepal. Uh, so uh, so I, I was also involved in uh, similar pilot projects launched by uh, some uh, local NGOs in, in Dharding district. Uh, so I, so I, I was fascinated to continue the same work for my master thesis, but I, I couldn't uh, manage fund for that. So, uh, so I then shifted towards uh, another great issue of this uh, of this decade, I, I must say, that is air pollution. So, uh, the air pollution observatories, the ground based air pollution uh, observatories in Nepal are quite scarce. And if you look at uh, the eastern part of Nepal, there are only few such observatories. So, uh, so for my master thesis, I tried to uh, collect data relevant to air quality, although, although uh, it was not directly the PM2.5 and PM10 data or some other. Uh, trace gases that we are mostly concerned about, but uh, it was about the uh, columnar aerosol optical depth, which is often considered as the proxy of PM2.5 data. So I, I, I managed to collect uh, the data for two uh, two seasons, post monsoon and winter, and then and then I also compared similar data uh, uh, collected by some satellite observatories. Besides that, I've been involved with some. Uh, uh, international organizations in air quality related studies uh, aiming to understand better understand air pollution in the Hindu Kush Himalayan region uh, and also uh, on water quality issues uh, I, I was involved in uh, the development of uh, climate resilient uh, water safety planning guidelines uh, that, that was uh, the joint project of World Health Organization and Department of Water Supply and CS Management, and I recently uh, worked as a data analyst uh, for analyzing data relevant to air quality and its consequences to uh, human health in uh, in Nepal. That was also a, a project that Kathmandu Medical College uh, was involved in. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like you have done a lot of planning. So you, we all know that our development rate is increasing day by day, mm -hmm. but is it sustainable or how can it be sustainable? What is your view on it? Uh, well, so whenever we talk about sustainability of projects, we, we, are, we should always be concerned about uh, the social, social and, uh, and, and the environmental sustainability. So if you look at the projects that have been launched in different parts of Nepal, uh, mm -hmm. so, so some of them don't uh, consider uh, the social acceptability as well as the environmental consequences of them. For example, if you if you were to uh, if you were to transfer some technology in Nepal, you should be concerned about uh, about the sustainability of the uh, of the project as well, because uh, all technologies uh, needs a specific uh, 
both course and uh, if we are uh, able to uh, generate the workforce relevant to that technologies as well as we should also be concerned about the environmental consequences uh, if, you are, if, if, you, if you are talking about uh, the water resources or, or about the air quality and all so but I think the environmental protection rules of Nepal mandates that uh, we need to uh, we need to look into different consequences, economic, social, uh, physical, biological, chemical, uh, cultural, uh, so impacts in every every aspect. So different projects are, are trying to uh, conduct uh, initial environmental examination as well as uh, environmental impact assessment studies before uh, directly uh, conducting those projects. So I think that, that we need to continue those those studies before conducting any any projects, um, and I guess the local people are also equally uh, crucial. Uh, I mean, uh, Im Im important uh, elements to uh, to launch those projects to look at the sustainability. Also.